rage on that beat going crazy. Two, two or three tackle warehouse orders a month. And uh, that's between, I'm going to say, February and <laughs> October. Um, that's when, you know, it's two to three a month. Uh, then I take a little break in October and I try, I try to hold out till the uh, Christmas sale on Tackle Warehouse and then, you know, do another giant one for the spring. Um, so all summer, I just kind of, um, restock myself on bits and pieces that I'm missing here and there. Uh, this is one of those. There was some stuff this summer, as you guys know, uh, it's been a disaster. Um, it just seems like everything that's in season is completely wiped out all summer. Um, you know, big curly tail worms were one of those things and I was flat out of these. So I just got a uh, pack of the, you know, the eight and a half inch power bait curly tail worm, the power worm staple. Uh, this is tequila sunrise, I think. Um, I like those kind of colors. Uh, I typically only fish a worm around cover in dingier water, deeper. And I think when you go deep and the light penetration isn't so good, um, you know, uh, the brighter colors aren't so bright when they're down deep. So uh, they, I don't think they're as obnoxious and I think it just gives them a little bit of glow. So uh, that was the first thing right on the top of this package. Next up, um, jig trailers. Jig trailers, I go through a lot of them for some reason. Um, so this is the uh, Netbait Pocket Chunk in the Senior. I don't like any of the other sizes. Um, this is the Kusa Special, which I'm a big fan of. I would, I mean, to me, it's a California 420. I don't know if I'll take it out. Everyone gets upset when you don't take uh, soft plastics out and look at them up close. And um, now you want to talk about a stinky bait. Net bait is a stinky bait. So there you go. Um, so it's like super, it's, it's black, probably like a black smoke, but, um, you know, with red flake, which is, um, clutch in my parts. And then the bottom's like a really light watermelon. Now, the importance of um, that for me is I, I pretty much every soft plastic or hard bait that I buy for that matter is two-tone because everything in nature is counter shaded. So I don't buy um, too many solid colors. Like to me, this is a watermelon red flake. So um, it's just a dark watermelon and a light watermelon on one side. And I think that contrast is always a good thing. So uh, staple trailer, uh, nothing exciting. It's a do nothing trailer, um, but good price, really awesome colors. Um, and it's a nice pour. So I like those. Um, next up, I needed... Again, worms seem to be really hard to come by this summer. I got a couple packs here, I believe, of the um, Robo Worm Fat Straight Tail Worms. Uh, I like these for just fishing on a shaky head primarily. That's really all that I fish it on. I don't typically Texas rig them. And if I did, I would do them on a real light Texas rig, you know, with like a uh, eighth ounce uh, sinker. But, um, what I was uh, going to tell you guys is I think I'm going to start a series here uh, that's much needed. When I go on websites like Tackle Warehouse um, and I'm looking at soft plastics or hard bait colors, sometimes I wish I could like get a real good look at it. Um, so I'm thinking I might pick a line of baits and maybe I'll have you guys tell me in the comments which line I should do and get all the colors. And then we'll look at them in front of light and with light in front of it. So we'll look at how translucent it is. So we'll look at it from both sides and I will get a color corrected board 
and a color corrected lamp and we'll you know when i do this i'll do them in 4k and we'll see exactly we'll go through a whole lineup and we'll see exactly what everything looks like because that's really important because um i don't think matching the hatch matters okay um i've seen bass just eat too many stupid looking things to think that that's a huge deal um so i think they call this color bisp i've never used this one pro blue neon um i've never bought any robo products in this color but um what i like about it is it's brown and purple and i use a lot of brown and purple but i like that it had the uh the pearl belly on it i just again the counter shading to me is huge so let's see i think i got one other yeah the other one I got was the uh, the, uh, the six inch fat straight tail worm in Aaron's blue smelt. I'll take it out. It's like, I'm gonna take one. I'm gonna take everything out I think today just to hook you guys up. So uh, there it is. You can see it is watermelon with a super light blue stripe through it. And then again, the creamy belly. I, I'm telling you guys, I'm all about the counter shading. Everything that swims has that color belly. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I try to get that um, in all of my soft plastics. And that, that, I mean, that, that goes for jig trailers as well as, you know, swim baits and worms. All right, what else do we have here? Went through everything here let's see make some room oh here's one i was uh excited about because i never used this in the uh the small size this is the uh osp doli beaver but in the three inch so i got it in i don't know the color i'm sorry it's it's the brown with the blue flake so there it is um I can't tell how it looks to you guys. I hope the glare isn't bad. Um, I bought these for two applications and two applications only. Um, the standard size Doe Live Beaver is one of my favorite finesse jig trailers. Um, and by finesse jig, I mean anything with like a three-aught hook that, um, you know, is like not an overpowering big, you know, pitching jig or a flipping jig. Um, any kind of casting jig or football jig with like a three-aught hook. I like the bigger one. I wanted something for like the little tiny Kitech uh, football jigs, things in that size range. And for um, just to try Ned rigging something different with uh, a little bit more action on it. Because sometimes where I fish the smallmouth... You can, the water's so clear that you could see them come up on a Ned rig and they kind of like, they kind of hesitate sometimes because the water's clear and they're spooked. And I think, you know, just having these weird little extra tentacles might, um, might entice a bite. I don't know. So, um, you know, they're known for that, um, that falling over action with those, uh, claws. So, He's little. I mean, he's a tiny guy. So, uh, you know, rad color. Um, you know, here where I live, browns and greens rule supreme. Um, black and blue is totally overrated um, here in uh, eastern Pennsylvania. Um, black and blue works, but I almost never use black and blue. Um, if I use black, I'll use black in a combination with some watermelon and some red flake, uh, like a California 420. Um, or uh, like, an, um, like a green pumpkin with a blue glitter, like half green pumpkin, half blue glitter. Um, that's an awesome color when you're pitching and flipping in like dark uh dark or really dirty water but um black and blue i don't know it's not a confidence color for me and it hasn't been in my 30 plus years of bass fishing um all right another staple um these catch bass and everything that swims like crazy this is the uh four and a half inch curly tail robo worm um i have them i always have them in the um the bluegill i think it's called bold bluegill 
I uh, never bought this color. Uh, I just used the bold bluegill and another one that's like a weird brown. This is, again, counter shading. You can see I'm a big fan. This is um, baby bass. So it's just green pumpkin on top with watermelon in the middle and again the pearl salty belly um you know i don't like you know there's certain baits that i don't think twice like that, that's a color that's just a no-brainer color um you know that uh, there's baby bass everywhere and you're gonna catch them on that See what else is in this box? They broke up. The Tackle Warehouse never does this. They broke up my order, which was a really small order. And I know what you're thinking right now is how is this dude turning a small order into something so long? And I apologize. All right. So um, Picasso Lures, they're known for, um, you know, um, hard, not hard baits, wire baits. Uh, and weights and they have lead and tungsten jigs and I got a couple a restock of the um, the tungsten worm weights these are the um, I believe these are eighth ounce without looking just from the outside I just can't see my uh, reading glasses are downstairs so I think these are eighth ounce I got eighth ounce and quarter ounce okay so, um, tungsten, lead free. I try to go tungsten whenever I can. And not for the reason most people think. I don't think tungsten's uh, necessarily more sensitive. Um, I use it because I just feel like, you know, when we do break off, we shouldn't be leaving lead if we don't have to in the water. Like, I'd really like to see lead go away in all wire baits completely forever um i'd like to just see us all switch to tungsten um because that lead um when it's tumbling around on the rocks i think it breaks down and i think it puts lead in the water and i just you know i think it's it's dated i don't think we need it um so here's one thing picasso i'm addicted to these i can't wean myself off them these are the uh picasso rhino heads i've been using these now i want to say a solid three or four years i use them for the smaller ones the the one aught hook and the two aught hook i use for ned rigs the three and the four aughts i use for my shaky heads um another reason i like picasso is they're from indiana pennsylvania which is where my parents met so shout out indiana pennsylvania because without you i wouldn't exist so um that's a reason that i try to support um Picasso lures, um, and that's one of the reasons I'm a big Mega Bass fan is because they do business uh, now. They move their corporate headquarters to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So, another brand out of Pennsylvania, um, Japanese brand headquartered in Japan. We all know that, but it's nice that corporates in um, Pennsylvania. And I've had to call there a few times for customer service and talk to some of the dudes there, and they're really cool guys and. Uh, totally relate to them. Here's another one that um, you may or may not be familiar with. This is the Mega Bass uh, Dyna Response. This is the smallest one. This is the two inch and it's a quarter ounce. Um, I've got uh, two or three of these. Um, I tend to not lose them, but I can never get enough of them. Like I really want to try to have them in every color. A great winter bait. I mean, this is winter fishing um northeast of the united states and i'm sure everywhere but the two inch quarter ounce is particularly deadly and a lot of the uh places that i fish have perch so i've never had it in the perch color i always buy the shad and bluegill colors but um i wanted to try it in perch so that's in there uh, sorry to do this to you guys bending out of the frame like this too okay yeah so this is the quarter ounce so quarter ounce eighth ounce uh picasso tungsten worm weights i get them in red here's why i don't think red um simulates blood like people think it does i think what happens is uh bass don't have the same color vision that we have 
It's just not the same. And I know they can see reds and oranges and differentiate them really well. But what I think red does is red looks more natural because I think underwater in low light, red disappears relatively quickly in the color spectrum. Like I think it's something below five to eight feet, red's no longer red, it's kind of a gray. So I get the red because I want like a gray weight out in front of the, um, the lure as opposed to a, like a black dot. So that's my own superstition. I don't think it looks like blood. I don't think it really matters, but I'm, again, I'm always trying, I really try to go natural with my colors because I feel like that's what everything that swims is. It's all natural colors and it's all camouflaged. And if we all stop bass fishing for two years, all of our fisheries would, would actually explode. The populations would explode and you'd see a lot of fish. And all those bass are finding things that look like this. They're finding things that look like this and eating them with no problem. So to think, you know, uh, I think a lot of fishermen think that without um, things being bright, that bass would just starve. And I really don't think that's the case. So this was a mistake purchase. I meant to get the 110 Junior, but not the plus one. Now where I fish, the plus one will work good. Um, and I've heard a lot of people think it's superior this is matte shad. Again, a natural color. Um, a lot of people think the 110 Junior is superior to uh, the 110 Junior. Um, the, I don't know. The plus one, I think it's an extra two to three feet deeper. Um, you can never have enough Vision 110s. Um, that's my confidence jerk bait. The 110 Junior is my confidence jerk bait. Um, I like the 110, but... I've always done better with smaller jerk baits. Um, the uh, uh, Duo Realis in the uh, 77 is a killer summertime jerk bait. Um, the Vision 110 Junior is like a good fall, winter, spring. Um, so again, I always, those are so expensive that. Um, I'll just like pick one up every time I place an order just so that like I don't get hit over the head with like a, a Vision 110 order. So I'll get um, pretty much every order, I'll get one mega bass hard bait just so that I never get clobbered because you know, they are really truly expensive and truly worth it. Um, that's one area where I don't skimp, you know, like things like, Jig trailers, I'll skip. But anything where the hooks come stock on it, like I'm not bothering with putting new hooks on my baits. I'm not doing it. So I want, you know, I'll put them on when they're bent or they're dull. I'll put new hooks on. But out of the package, I want to use the bait the way it is. Because I think that's insane to think, um, you know, you're going to get something new, take out your split ring pliers and put new hooks on something that you paid for. That's totally nuts. All right, so I don't know why they didn't just put this all in the same box. I told you it was a small unboxing. This is the other um, pocket chunk seniors that I got. Um, they call this one natural craw. It's brown with an orange belly, but it's not, um, it's not like a fluorescent orange. It's really muted and I hope that comes across, you know, maybe I'll, maybe that'll be the first video I do where I do soft plastic colors. I'll just order every Baca chunk color and we'll get them in front of a proper color correction background. So, you know, I, I don't know, pumpkin seed color, a little bit of a, uh, I'm telling you it's muted. It's, I mean, I, when you're looking at it on camera, it might look like a bright orange, but it's not bright orange. It's very dull and muted. And I think in the water, it's just going to get, again, it's going to look like something that's brown on top with a lighter belly that just isn't white. And I think that's what the fish look for. I just think they want a little contrast. Um, so yeah, next up, 
I told you I try to use everything Picasso. Um, this is the um, Fantasy Swinger. I've never used this before. I'm curious as to how good they work. This has the, uh, you know, the football head with the roughed up front and a typical um, swing head hook, which is like a four out hook. Um, I've been using for the last few years, the, uh, the Strike King, um, the structure jig. I use all Strike King structure jigs for most of my jigs. Uh, I didn't get any today, but um, the swing head structure jig from Strike King is the one that I use. And um, I wanted to try one with an actual football head because that's, you know, what everyone uses. And I've never used it. I've always used the, the structure head. So um, we're going to try that. I think it'll be fine. I don't think I'll notice any difference. Uh, last thing in the bag is, or in the, the two tackle warehouse boxes here, is the uh, Gemakatsu G Finesse. Um, heavy cover worm hook now um i'll tell you what it is i got them in um one aught through four aught what it is about this that uh, so this is the last thing we'll talk about what attracted me to these i've never used them before um i'm typically an owner guy and almost everything in my box is owner um so uh i have a couple gammy hooks but Apparently, Aaron Martin's made these just slightly thinner wire, thinner gauge wire. So it's not something, even though they're meant to be fished in cover, and it's a straight shank hook, okay? Meant to be fished in cover, and I think they put some kind of nano coating on it. I'm sure they do. Um, but it's finer wire, so uh, longer casts, thinner line, I'm all about it. I think what's going to happen in the future is I think fishing line diameter, like right now we're dinosaurs. And I think what you're gonna see, you know, 20 years from now, you're gonna see that like fishing line diameters are going to become ultra, ultra tiny. Like, you know, like 50 pound super line will be like the size of like six pound line. I mean, I think that technology's naturally gonna take us there. Um, and then I think we'll get thinner and thinner hooks that are less invasive. So anytime I can get away with a thinner gauge hook, as long as I know it's not gonna bend out. And I've never been a hook out. Um, you know, and maybe that speaks to the caliber of fish I catch. I don't know, but I've caught some big large mouth. And, um, you know, proper rod, proper line. You really shouldn't be bending hooks out. Now these aren't fine wire hooks, so you know, I'm thinking with like 17 pound line, these are going to be, you know, really rad. Um, and I think I can get away with 15 pound easily when I'm fishing worms. And to be honest with like the, um, the one knot, you know, I'm sure that I can set the hook if I had to on 12 pound, but you know, this is something I'll fish these on like 15 to 17 um, I'm always looking for a way to downsize my line. Um, just one kick from what everyone uses. People typically use 20 pound. I try to get away with like 17 pound and on down. So if some people typically get away with 17 pound, I try to get away with 15 pound. I always try to go one step lower. Um, <clears throat> where there's an exception to that rule is with finesse presentations on spinning reels, I tend to always go up one size from what people typically use. So if someone's using four pound or six pound, I'm usually using six or eight. I always go kind of, I air up a little bit. So guys, um, sorry that it was like such a little unboxing, but um, you know, Everybody likes to see what other people are getting. I always watch any unboxing video comes up. I sit there and I just watch it. I like to hear people talk about their reasons of why they use certain things. And I like to see things that they're, you know, I like to just see what people are using. It's, it's fun. I mean, you know, um, as adults, we don't, you know, 
we go to work and we don't get like toys anymore. And for anglers, this is like one of the few things we get where we're like, rad, cool, you know, like these look cool. You know, it's something we get to do uh, like that. So, you know, I don't know. Hope you liked it. Um, working on another special guest this week. Hopefully coming up this week, we'll have another really cool guest that a lot of you know. Um, yeah, so more good stuff coming. Thanks for tuning in today and go catch some fish. Take time out of your week to reflect on how important it is to do things for yourself and for your family, but really take care of yourself. Because if you take care of yourself first and foremost, then it makes it a lot easier for you to take care of other people. So do something good for yourself, call in the work sick, take a day off, go fishing, go do something for yourself, get your head straight. Um, thanks for, you know, giving me the follows and all the love that I've been getting the last couple of weeks. Thanks for uh, supporting the channel. You know, uh, the channel's small, but the people that do follow it are vocal and really kind and really awesome. And I can't thank you guys enough. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.